Hi and welcome to Data Economy Today. I'm here with Steve Johnson, Regional Director for Northern Europe at Brokers Wireless, uh, the wireless business unit for Brocade. Uh, Steve, thanks a lot for talking to me. Uh, That's a pleasure. Th can you give us an idea of the cloud landscape around Europe and especially the Nordics region? Absolutely. So investment in cloud, as you'd expect uh, in Europe, is growing rapidly. Um, absolutely following the, the trend of um, the developed world. The reason for that is uh, the advantages that are gained from organizations who want to specialize in what they do, not be specialists in IT necessary. And having to carry significant IT resources um, and invest in significant IT resources to enable the digital transformation of their businesses. So what cloud enables is essentially um, a much uh, simpler deployment of IT, a simpler management of IT, and a far more efficient and productive outcome from IT. In the Nordic region, it's interesting that you pick on the Nordic region. Um, I uh, also manage the Nordic region, uh, and what I found and my experiences of working in that environment is that it's a far more forward-thinking uh, environment. Um, the, the Nordic countries um, very much take a look at new technologies and immediately try and find ways of adopting those two, uh, technologies and even advancing them. I mean, the Nordics, you'll know, Yao, is one of the most creative and uh, uh, inventive uh, environments from a technology point of view in the world. So they've absolutely adopted the concept of cloud and are investing in it as much as anybody else in Europe. And then how important is their place in Europe within the, the cloud market? Why are they such a key? Key player. I think because of their um, creativity, so the, the fact that they're always looking to stretch the boundaries and to absolutely, they're far less averse to risk in terms of some of the IT investments that they make. And it, what's interesting is that they can take um, simple concepts like cloud managed infrastructure and start to build bespoke services around that. And then we've recently heard about cloud Wi-Fi. Can you explain what cloud Wi-Fi is in the, the, the broader context? Sure, absolutely. So, well, Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. So at the point at which a device, whether it's a, a pad, a laptop, a mobile device, or uh, a headless device, for example, you know, a, a part of the Internet of Things, maybe smart meters in people's homes or products along that uh, kind of uh, line, um, they all need to connect to an access point. So the access point remains a physical attribute of the solution. The cloud component of it is actually the management of that Wi-Fi deployment, the management of those access points, and uh, enables a very simple, intuitive means of uh, owning, managing, configuring, troubleshooting, uh, pulling information and data from, and ultimately deploying as a solution. And then Ruckus has uh, recently launched uh, Ruckus Cloud Wi-Fi. We have. Can you explain what Ruckus Cloud Wi-Fi is and what's the benefits of this cloud? Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, it, it's exactly the same architecture. So it's a cloud uh, architecture that allows a customer to uh, deploy, manage, troubleshoot, and pull data um, from a centralized location. So it's very much aimed at organizations with low uh, or no IT uh, skills and resources. But the key component and uh, one of the key differentiators is obviously that it uses the Ruckus access points um, as the APs. So Ruckus has a unique technology uh, in terms of Beamflex. I won't go into the technical details now, but essentially enables best-in-class RF uh, connectivity. So it provides the end user with a far better connection. And ultimately, delivering Wi-Fi is about two things. One is, uh, if you think about it, it's the one opportunity that an organization has as a point of connection to either delight or disappoint its customers, its employees, its business partners, its stakeholders in terms of the experience that they have. So it's very, very important that the experience they have at the point of connection is as good and as consistent as is possible. The other component is how complex it is. Uh, and it's kind of an old standing joke in our industry, but I'm often faced with the question, uh, how hard can it be not to install wires? Well, the truth is it, 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 it's very complex and very hard. And what the cloud platform from Ruckus actually enables us to do is from a customer perspective, remove all of that complexity and make their interaction with the solution very, very simple. Are there any hardships in terms of deploying the technology itself? Is it easy for a customer to buy technology and then you just go there and you deploy it? It's oh, very, very so. simple. I mean, it's as simple as going online, setting up your own cloud account uh, online, um, acquiring an access point, taking a photograph of the, the serial number of the access point, associating that serial number with your cloud account, 
plugging the access point in and the access point will find its way back to your Is account. Is correct to say it's almost plug and play? It's virtually plug and play, oh, yes. Okay. And what's the, the plan for the European rollout, especially around the Nordics? Okay, so we're launching in the UK first. Okay. Um, the rest uh, of Europe will follow shortly. We don't have a defined date on that, but okay. it will be in the coming months. Are they looking at the data center space? How is cloud Wi-Fi going to benefit or pressure, put some pressure on the data center side? Um, well, there, there, there's two types of cloud. So there's the, the public cloud, which is what Ruckus is launching today, where the cloud uh, controller itself is hosted by and managed by, Ru hosted by Ruckus. Um, there is an alternative technology set that we have in our portfolio, uh, which is based on the virtual smart zone technology, which enables integrators and uh, service providers to build their own private clouds. So it's a multi-tenanted solution that enables a partner to create their own Wi-Fi cloud uh, environment and deploy bespoke services to their customers. And that's still one of the fastest growing areas of our business as well. Now that clearly, all of that, uh, the uh, virtual smart zone itself, but also the kind of services that you would wrap around that solution, all need to reside in the data center. So it's um, all driving uh, greater need for uh, higher quality and higher capacity data center infrastructure. Uh, what's the future expansion plans for Ruckus and even Brocade? Uh, what's the plans that you have on the cards? Well, the, the acquisition of Ruckus by Brocade uh, has really opened our eyes to uh, a, an opportunity that wasn't there for either company previously. So we see the world as moving um, to an environment that to enable this digital transformation of business and also cope with the uh, the macro trends that we see globally at the moment, things like investment in the Internet of Things um, and big data analytics. What every organization needs is a very stable, high-performing, consistent infrastructure underlying it all and being the platform that enables all of these different things. And the unique uh, coming together of Ruckus and Brocade Technologies has created the world's biggest pure play networking vendor and our objective is absolutely to fulfill that need. So how hard or how easy was it to bring the two companies together? How well, I, I mean, we're only a few months in, uh, okay. and as far as uh, my experience has been, uh, it's been exceptional. Okay. So I've been through a number of acquisitions in the past. I've been an acquiree and an acquirer, um, and the synergies between the two organizations and the uh, um, clarity of the vision and the strategy as we move forward I think makes everything much easier. And then picking up on your experience, personal experience, you yeah. said you've done some acquisitions before, you were acquired before. Yeah. How have you seen the market change throughout your career in terms of m Well, I think the one thing that that uh, really represents is a consolidation of technologies. Okay. So, uh, but as that um, comes, uh, different technology layers and different technology stacks begin to converge and it makes sense for the M&As to happen. What that does is prove a very fertile breeding ground for new companies, the new innovative companies to uh, backfill some of the spaces left by those organizations. Thanks a lot, Steve. Um, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all the other social media channels. And you can visit our website at data-economy.com.